I thought it'd be a good idea to actually do a video on advice on buying gas masks because a lot of people always keep asking me questions about buying gas masks. And while yes, my answer is always just get them from eBay, um, there's probably a bit more to it than that so I thought I'd go into some good rules so you don't get ripped off buying gas masks and to know what you're actually doing. So there's different reasons you could want a gas mask or a respirator. Number one, because you actually need the gas mask or respirator, you know, as an actual safety thing. Number two, you want to get it as a collector, and, you know, there could be other reasons as well. You just want one because it looks cool and you don't want a collection. Um, so there's various reasons you could want one, and that's going to shape what you want to do to get a gas mask. So if you just simply wanted one because they look cool, go onto eBay, type in gas masks, and see what comes up. Um, look for obviously actual real ones, not fake gas masks. There aren't fake gas masks really as in, you know, there's like rip-off Rolexes and stuff like that, but there are fake gas masks as in there's ones designed for airsoft which aren't actual gas masks. And I think there's one or two like joke kind of prop gas masks. You should be able to tell fairly easily what's a real gas mask and what isn't. Uh, the real ones obviously actually have parts to them and, you know, are designed to work in a certain way. So, if you just simply want one because you want to own a gas mask, what you can do on eBay is type in gas mask, sort from lowest to you know highest price, tick the box that says you know show any ones with free postage, or something like that, and then you can see you know loads and loads of gas masks and choose one to your heart's content. Um, if you're wanting them as a collector, what I would highly advise you do is try and work out what the actual value of a mask is. So let's see you looking on eBay, you see a mask, you think, oh that looks interesting, what's this mask? What you then need to do is actually, you know, try and find out if you can the name of the mask. The gas mask wiki is very good for that. There's a couple of other sites. Um, you know, you should be able to find them from Google. But you basically want to try and find out what the name of a mask is so you can try and work out what the value of it is before you bid or buy one. Um, because a big issue, I think, for a lot of people is that they'll get ripped off or they'll... Uh, you know, not understand what the price is, because sometimes I see people say in the YouTube comments, oh, I saw that gas mask you really like, like the FM12 or the CT12, but it was $30, that's really expensive. That's really cheap for an FM12. Yeah, imagine if you're buying, like, a second-hand car. Um, obviously, if you had an old rusty Ford Focus or something like that, I don't know. Um, but, you know, you had an old rusty, uh, not very good condition car that was made, you know, mass-produced. Everyone had one. Um, they're going to be the ones that are going to be fairly cheap in comparison, whereas if you had, like, some of the gas mask equivalent of Ferraris, you know, uh, they're going to be a lot more money. So, that's probably a bad example, but what I'm trying to get at is the different masks have different intrinsic values. There's lots of things that can affect the value, but you want to know first what the value is you're roughly going to be paying for an item, the ballpark kind of figure, so then you can work out if you get a bargain, something's really cheap, or, you know, ones that are being way too overpriced and not to buy. It's just generally a good idea of anything to do a bit of shopping around and work out the price of something before you decide to go over it. There's a couple of sites, I'm not exactly sure of the names of them, but they're sites that you don't want to use just because they charge way too much money for gas masks. Like, you know, places that sell Soviet gas masks for over, like, $100, $200. Uh, so avoid them like the plague. As I said, eBay is normally your best bet because you can sort by price and things like that. Um, now, obviously, if you're buying a gas mask user's protection, you're getting it as a respirator it's more important to know you're getting something that's going to work so what you really need to do is research what type of filters it takes what kind of filters you need if there's any sort of guarantees of the mask where it's from I've said this before and I'll say it again if you're buying a mask for your own personal protection um, you know money's not a massive object I'd personally go for a 3M full face mask or another industrial brand of full face masks and then just buy one of their ABEC kind of P3 combination filters that you can get from. The good thing about if you go down the route of getting an industrial mask or a workplace or a respirator is that the filters are generally much easier to find and there's more competition on price between the filters because you're not buying surplus filters, you're buying, you know, like industrial goods. So I said that's why 3M masks are good. When I actually use um, a respirator for real purposes, I use a 3M one, not because loads of my gas masks wouldn't work, because, but I'd rather just have a lighter weight, smaller half face respirator where I can buy replacement filters I know are going to work cheaply rather than, you know, hunting down in-day industrial or, um, you know, actual military filters. 
Um, I might do another video on choosing more respirators to buy if you want one for a survival thing. I've done videos like that before, but maybe I can do an updated one on that. But, you know, as I was saying, if you're buying it as a collector, the main thing I advise you to do is shop around. Another important thing to note, I've said this before and other people have mentioned it in the comments as well, is look on the different websites, as in with eBay, you have like eBay.co.uk I mostly use, you have eBay.com, you have, you know, like most countries have a, like their .com.co.uk, whatever you want to call the bit at the end of the web page, sort of URL. They normally have an eBay for each thing, and if you go on those, sometimes the results are different, even if it's worldwide shipping. So what you want to do is obviously pick one that's actually a good, uh, you know, like, so you can find masks is what I'm trying to get at. Because sometimes, like with these Chinese masks, very rarely do I find one on the UK eBay for sale for Chinese masks. However, sometimes when you go on other versions of eBay, um, you'll find these masks, you know, a lot easier. So there's always that. Um, so my main advice really is just to shop around and get some idea of what the mask is first. Also because a lot of the time people put wrong information on. Sometimes they're doing it on purpose because they, you know, want money and they're a bit scummy. Other times people just have no clue what the mask is they're selling and they just put anything that comes to mind. The amount of people that put World War II on Cold War masks is crazy. Um, you see so many GP5s advertised as World War II masks when they're not. So... Also, sometimes where people in the title have like three different gas mask names in the title and the pictures, you can't work out what mask it is. So I'd adv advise, you know, not buying from people like that. Um, but, yeah. A general rule is, if you see a mask on eBay you're interested in, find out what the name of the mask is first. Then do a bit of shopping around to try and work out what the market value of a mask is. Because masks, like everything else, you know, work on a supply-demand kind of pricing structure and then you can get the mask, hopefully, at the best possible price. Also, if you're going to bid on a mask, um, this is advice from what I do, um, it's what most people do on eBay if they know what they're doing, don't place a bid straight away, add the mask to your watch list, when the mask is getting close to the time it's ending, that's when you put a bid on. The reason you don't bid beforehand is if you put your max bid on, um, you know, like a couple of days in advance of a bid ending, other people can see that there's people waiting to bid on it, and they might put bids on. If you have a really high bid, yeah, you might still get it, but you're going to drive the price up. That's why I personally, you know, wait till near the end of an auction before putting on my total bid, just because that way it's less likely people are going to rush in and bid against you. So that's a bit of friendly advice, it's what I do. It gives me a bit of an advantage, to be honest, at getting masks cheaply. So I've heard people in the comments sometimes complain, it's funny because they were the bids I won the masks on, they're like, oh, I put £50 on this mask. Well, not that much, because I probably wouldn't have paid that, but you know. I put £20 on this mask, uh, like, a week ago, and then some dickhead won it at the last minute. <laughs> um, so yeah, there you go, uh, that's my advice. Always put your bid on near the end, um, because that way you're causing less competition for yourself, because eBay... You know, auctions don't work like going once, going twice auctions, they work on a time limit. So you put your total in right before the time limit ends to get your offer in, you know, at the last minute, not days in advance so people can work out, you know, shall I try and bid higher than him? Because even if they don't end up outbidding you, sometimes they'll drive the amount you're going to have to pay up. Which is good for the person selling the mask, but it's not really good for you trying to buy it. Um, so that's my advice, but yeah, the main thing... Please, if you're going to buy a gas mask, work out what the mask is, work out what its actual value is as well. Oh, and of course, I haven't mentioned it yet, but asbestos in the filters, you know, other dodgy stuff in the filters. Um, try and work out as well, you know, how safe the mask is if you're going to wear it. Masks generally are safe, but the filters aren't, so, you know, that's another thing as well, is work out what, uh, you know, the intrinsic values are and the safety advice, that would be my main advice to buying gas masks.